In this video, we'll review the setup of Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core for developers running macOS. This includes covering the installation of ASP.NET Core and Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. We'll then build out an example using Visual Studio for Mac. Let's begin. First, let's review the requirements for ASP.NET Core. We'll start with the different versions that are available. ASP.NET Core 1 applications can be built using a machine running macOS 10.11 El Capitan or macOS 10.12 Sierra. If you wish to target ASP.NET Core 2, you'll need a machine running macOS 10.12 Sierra. And finally, targeting ASP.NET Core 3 requires macOS 10.13 High Sierra. For this video, we'll target ASP.NET Core 3 on macOS 10.14.6 Mojave. At the time of this video's production, macOS Catalina is only available as a preview. Now let's download and install the .NET SDK, which includes the .NET Core runtime and the .NET CLI. The easiest way to do this is by downloading the installer from .NET.Microsoft.com. You can either choose to download the current release or another release based on your requirements. For example, here's the preview release of ASP.NET Core 3. Do take care to review all the docs, especially any docs that refer to the development tools that you may wish to use, like Visual Studio for Mac. Now, another way of installing the .NET Core SDK is through the .NET dash install scripts. It's essentially a script that automates for a non-admin installation. This works by downloading an archive from the build drops hosted on Azure, and then downloads this onto your machine. Once you have the .NET Core SDK installed, the next step is to set up your coding environment. The good news is that it doesn't really matter what your development environment looks like. ASP.NET Core and Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core will work with any environment, so long as it provides a text editor. Visual Studio for Mac provides a great environment for developers targeting ASP.NET Core. It supports a number of great features to help you build web applications. These include project templates that include code scaffolding. This helps you get up and running quickly with a new project. You can also use project management tools like NuGet directly inside the environment. You can download Visual Studio for Mac from visualstudio.microsoft.com slash vs slash Mac. It's definitely worth checking out. If you aren't using Visual Studio for Mac, then you'll need a text editor. Personally, I like Visual Studio Code. I think it's the best text editor available. It works incredibly well on Mac OS. Alternatives like Sublime Text or Atom are good solutions as well. Let's move on to working with Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. I'll download the latest build of Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core from my account on Telerik.com. We also provide other files for setup. These are for customers looking to host packages within a development environment. We also provide extensions for Visual Studio on Windows separately along with the source code. All of this is available when you purchase a license. I should note that we provide this same set of files for every version of the product we make. Also, we provide internal and beta builds for customers looking to incorporate hotfixes or advanced features that haven't yet shipped. Let's unpack the archive that was downloaded and explore its contents. Every release includes a change log. This is the first place to look if you're curious about what's been fixed or added to the release. The change log is always structured by component. At the bottom, you'll find any changes made to our wrappers for ASP.NET Core. The data source folder contains the NuGet package for our data source component. We've done this to make things a little bit more modular. This allows you to use operations like filtering, sorting, grouping, and paging on the server without depending on mvc.dll or kendo.mvc.dll. The JS and style folders contain the minified scripts and styles for Kendo UI. This is the front end library that's used by Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. Additionally, they contain source maps to facilitate readability and debugging in your browser's dev tools. The cultures and messages folders here contain the cultural information and strings for different locales. The PDF Viewer folder contains the .NET assemblies required for hosting the PDF Viewer control, which is part of Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. This also includes the Telerik document processing libraries, which provides APIs for working with popular document formats like PDF. Moving on, the TypeScript folder contains the type definitions for Kendo UI. 
If you're targeting TypeScript, you can use this file via a reference, which should provide more intelligence to your IDE for type completion and so on. Related to this is the VS Doc folder, which contains files to support the language service of Visual Studio. This informs IntelliSense about the types used for Kendi UI and should improve your development experience for the front end. And finally, there's the wrappers. Here, you'll find the NuGet package for Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. This is the package for its DLL and associated resources. You'll also find a set of editor templates used by controls like the grid when editing content through that control. If you're looking to use the grid with these templates, we have a dedicated article about this that you can check out. Now let's create a sample application using Visual Studio for Mac. Visual Studio for Mac comes with a number of built-in project templates to help you get started quickly. I'll select the web application template and click Next. The project wizard will ask which version of .NET Core I wish to target. Let's go with the latest version and click Next. Finally, I'll provide a name, Hello ASP.NET Core. I can use this dialog to change the solution name or the location of where my project is created. I also have the option to use Git for version control. For this example, I'll assume the defaults and just click Create. At this point, Visual Studio for Mac will create a solution with the following file structure. Now, if you haven't built an application targeting ASP.NET Core, I'd recommend checking out some of the resources that are available at .NET.Microsoft.com. There you'll find videos, how-to articles, and workshops that bring you up to speed on all things ASP.NET. Jumping back to Visual Studio for Mac, let's run the application. If this is the first time you've built an ASP.NET Core application on your machine, Visual Studio for Mac will present this dialog informing you that a development certificate is missing. This is because a secure connection is used to connect to the server instance hosting your app. As a result, we need to create and install a development certificate. Clicking yes will perform this operation for you. Of course, this requires elevated privileges, so I'll provide my credentials. Once that's done, Visual Studio for Mac will build the application, attach a debugger, and launch a browser window that points to a local page. This is the default view for an ASP.NET Core application. Again, if you wish to understand the structure, make sure to check out the resources available on .NET.Microsoft.com. Another way to manage development certificates is through the .NET CLI. This is installed as part of the .NET Core SDK. The CLI includes a tool which allows you to manage development certificates on your local machine. Running this tool informs me that a valid certificate is already present. This is what Visual Studio for Mac did for us earlier. Now let's integrate and use Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. Navigating to the Solution Pad, I'll right-click the Dependencies folder and select Add Packages. This window shows me packages from registered NuGet sources. Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core is hosted on a private NuGet feed that we provide to customers. So, in order for me to access it, I have to add it as a source. I'll do this by selecting the Configure Sources option from this list. By default, Visual Studio for Mac and the .NET Core tooling have NuGet.org integrated as a source. Let's add another one. When I click the Add button, I'm presented with a window to specify the name, location, and credentials of a new source. I'll use the name Telerik. The location will be nuget.telerik.com slash nuget. And finally, I'll provide my credentials. Once that's done, I'll click OK to save my changes. We should see the packages from that location show up. Please note that we have a page in our documentation that walks you step-by-step step about how to do this. Let's go ahead and search for ASP.NET.Core. Here is the package we need to add Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core to our application. I'll select it and click Add Package. 
After the package is pulled down, it is verified for compatibility with our existing project. If everything looks good, the following dialog is displayed, prompting me to accept the license terms. Now we need to integrate Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core into our application. The first thing I need to do is register the Kendi UI service with this application. This is done through the configure services method. A service is a reusable component that provides app functionality. Services are configured in this method and consumed across the app via dependency injection or application services. Next, we need to import the kendo.mvc.ui namespace in the view imports for the application. This will allow us to reference the HTML helpers that ship in Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core for any of the views that we wish to create. We'll also include our tag helpers so that they can be used in our views as well. The next step is to include the client-side resources for Kendo UI for ASP.NET Core. We'll do this because Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core relies on Kendo UI for its client-side rendering. This step can be done in a few ways. For this example, I'll show you how to include them manually. However, you can use popular web development tools like NPM. To begin, I'll copy the JS and Styles folders you saw earlier into my project. Namely, we'll add it to a folder called kendo-ui in the lib folder. This is short for libraries. This folder is used to persist any third-party client-side libraries we need for our application. Now that's done, the next step is to reference those libraries in the shared layout for my application. I'll begin by moving the jQuery script reference to the head section. I'll explain why in a moment. Next, I'll add two script references, kendo.all.min.js and kendo.aspnetmvc.min.js. The first script is for Kendo UI, that front-end library I mentioned earlier, which is used by Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. This contains all the functionality that Kendo UI supports through its interactions and underlying logic through its widgets. The second script is used to integrate these widgets with the server backend, namely the wrappers from Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. For example, you may utilize the data source component to consume data and provide that to a front-end widget in Kendo UI. All of the communication taking place between your code running on the server and your code running on the client is facilitated through this script file. Let me now explain why I moved the jQuery script reference to the head section. This is done because of the way Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core outputs the widgets for Kendo UI. The markup that's emitted includes the initialization of these widgets. As such, dependencies like jQuery and the Kendo UI scripts are assumed to be loaded during this step. That's why we have to place these script references in the head section. Otherwise, the widgets would not render due to those missing dependencies. Now, I realize that this may not be optimal. That's why our controls support deferred initialization. We have documentation on this subject, so I'd recommend you check that out. I have one more thing left to do in the layout view, which is to include a theme. We ship a lot of themes with Kendo UI for ASP.NET Core. I'll add the Nova theme, which will style any Kendo UI widgets that are rendered to the page. It's important to note that these themes are available on our CDN as well. The last step is to add the date picker to our homepage. I'll do this through its HTML helper. As I mentioned before, Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core provides both HTML helpers and tag helpers to suit your style of development. All that's left for us to do is to run our application. And as you can see, here is the date picker we added with the Nova theme applied. At this point, you're ready to go with Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. As an alternative to Visual Studio for Mac, 
It's worth mentioning that everything that you saw here can be done using the .NET CLI and an environment like Visual Studio Code. In this video, we explored the setup of Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core for developers running macOS. You learned how to install and configure ASP.NET Core and Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core. You also saw an example that was built using Visual Studio for Mac. For more information about Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core, please visit our website at telerik.com slash ASP.NET dash core dash UI.